used the suggested run for seven days and on the eighth day it suggested I have a rest. Yes, I know, I know, it's, it's quite biblical. How smart are our smartwatches? In this video, I take this smartwatch through seven days of rigorous training where I follow its artificial intelligence telling me what to do in my suggested training runs. So be sure to stick to the very end because there's some amazing findings where I run through floods here in Worcester and also it eventually tells me to stop. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up subscribe and hit that alarm bell because there's going to be a part two, three and so on and so forth and you won't want to miss those but this is a quick intro of what happened during those first seven days of following suggested training runs on this lovely Garmin smartwatch. Leave in the comments below if you have used this particular feature on the Garmin watch suggested workouts, how you found it, why did you use them, did it help you? Tip top trippers, my name is Donato and welcome back to my channel. I'm England Marathon Master and Guinness World Record and as of last week I'm also now England Masters 10k runner. Yeah! <laughs> so yes, our smartwatches, as I switch on lights so you can see that. How smart are these? There's a lot of talk right now about artificial intelligence. You may have seen about ChatGPT, if you haven't heard about that, apparently a million people signed up to that within a matter of days. It's the in thing, it's in vogue, it's on topic, but I've seen so many people do all sorts of different types of training like run every day for January or not following any training. I thought for a bit of fun and some content here on YouTube to follow the suggested workouts because having recently bought this Garmin Enduro, for, for me it was a lot of money, I know we're onto the Garmin Enduro 2, um, but there's so many gazillion features on here, I thought let's try the suggested workouts because I'd completed my cool down so to speak or recovery week from that epic 10k race, so I thought let's try something different. So I thought this would be something different, but little did I know that here in Worcester we'd have floods arriving here and the courses that I normally run had disappeared. It's the end of another path, can't go any further here. <laughs> so let's go back the other way. Underwater, so I had to change my courses, routes and all types of stuff. So it was a bit of fun, something to try out. And yes, as I mentioned earlier on, the watch eventually does tell me to stop running. I know. Think about that. It told me to stop running. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. What do you do on days when you're not running? Leave it in the comments below. So in this video I see does following the daily suggested workouts, does it make me fitter, stronger, and more to the point, does it make me faster runner by following these suggested workouts? Let's go through day by day and see how it helps me. In terms of the workout throughout the seven days, it included, in my opinion, all the different types of runs from base runs, which I would call more sort of zone two type training, recovery runs, sprints, threshold or lactate threshold as some people might call it and also a long run or a long base run. So we incorporated all of those. So let's go through day by day and I will be producing a full epic long video of all this of me going out with my GoPro chatting through as I was progressing with each and every run in more detail of every run, how I found each run and so on. But this is just a quick summary to show you what I went through for the week in terms of following the suggested workouts. So day one, Monday, it suggested a base run of 39 minutes. And just to let you know, for each week, each day, every time it suggested a base run, the suggested run is at speed of a five minute and five seconds per kilometer. Now, the suggested speed for you guys will be different. So it's assuming my level of fitness. My VO2 max at the beginning of the week was 59. Yeah, that's what the Garmin said, 59. So would it improve and increase throughout the seven days? Let's see how it all unfolds. Tuesday, it came up with another base run, but this time it was 49 minutes at same pace, five minutes and five seconds. So day two, 
and it's the second base run. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm now thinking in my head, is it just going to suggest base runs all the way through the whole week just to keep me ticking over? But no, Wednesday, first shock to the system. It suggested a threshold run. Yes, I know, two sets of 19 minutes at four minutes and five second pace, pretty quick. Now there was some times to do the warm up at the front and a bit of a, not cool down, but a little bit of a rest in the middle and also the cool down at the end. So not too hard, but I found that particular run really, really tough. I wouldn't say the word brutal, which uh, I think seems to be an overused word on Instagram these days, and it seems to be simmering here into YouTube, but we'll have another video about words. What do they actually mean? And are they being overused? But I digest. I digest, I digress. I'll be digesting a pizza a bit later. Yeah, I know, I know. Wednesday was that threshold run at four minutes and five. The second set of 19 minutes, I couldn't hold it at all. I think I was running about a four minute 30 per kilometer. So was my body a bit too tired to fatigue to follow it? But I don't beat myself up when I can't follow the training. I just take it on board. Yeah, that's, it is what it is. I digest it, I ingress it, whatever, and then we move on to the next day. The next day, Thursday, was a recovery run. Woo! Now this was a time of only 28 minutes, but a pace of five minutes and 50 minutes per kilometer, nearly a whole minute slower than the base run. Naturally, I really enjoyed that, and it was great, recovering felt really good. Now we come on to Friday, whoa, first sprints of the week. This was nine sets of 100 meters. Now this is where I think in terms of the technology gadgetry in this, I think there's a real flaw in this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. For me, being an engineer by trade, technology and all that type of stuff, should we cut back, cut right down to the basics? The GPS on this, it was suggesting a speed of two minutes 35 per kilometer pace for the 100 meters. Should we talk about the science? This is transmitting or receiving from a satellite many thousands of miles away. So the time it takes me to run 100 meters, do you think that this watch has, the speed has come up to the speed that you're actually running for that 100 meters in those few seconds that you're doing 100 meters? Personally, I don't think so. So the times that it was showing, the speeds that it was showing, I believe were totally inaccurate. Also where I was running, there was buildings around me. So I don't think it's accurate at all. So for me, I'm just running all out, flat out, away I go. Whether I was at two minutes per kilometer pace, three minutes per kilometer, it had recorded, I think three minutes 15 per kilometer. I know full well it was faster than that. So there's a lag, yeah, there's a lag. That's my only message in that. Now, so with these sprints, because of the lag, if you're gonna be looking at your watch, and I wasn't looking at my watch for the 100 meters. I know people do regularly look, as I see them running, they're looking at the watch, looking at the watch, looking at the watch, thinking, whoa, 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 I'm at the right pace. So if you're running a steady pace, consistent, you know, like marathon running, marathon racing, it can work to a point, provided there's no tall buildings around you or you're in wooded areas, again, where GPS doesn't work properly. Um, you do recall Docklands area, London Marathon, where I was recording three minute 30 per kilometer pace. Mm. Yeah, when my pace was actually a whole minute slower. But hey, so that's my little first finding on this is uh, for the sprints, I enjoyed them. Nine sets, 100 meters around the dock. I say the Docklands area. <laughs> For me, it was the Diglas Basin, uh, which was flooded on the, the day I was there, right further down. So I did spot some woodpeckers a few days before, and you'll see this in the full video. Where I'll talk about what I'd spotted and seen on my runs. Um, but the day when I was doing my sprints, I was literally just going up and down, right by the apartments near there, just above the flooded uh, the floodplains. So yeah, managed to do it, enjoyed it, fantastic. Now we come on to Saturday. And this was the first surprise to me based on when I normally do these types of runs. Saturday was a suggested base run of one hour 50. So a long run and be it base run, it suggested the same speed as the previous base runs, which was at five minutes and five seconds. With it being a Saturday, I thought, well, let's incorporate a park run. 
in this. So let's go and run the park run and run multiple times round to make up the uh, distance. Now, unfortunately, Worcester Pitchcroft was totally flooded. So I went to the Worcester Park Run, which the locals call it Worcester Woods because it is running around the woods, but it's just called Worcester Park Run. That's where I was. Uh, so I ran to the park run, made up some time, and then I ran around the park run four times. And when I finished that particular run, it came back. And when you finish the actual run, it says what you completed. Uh, sometimes it says, well done, congratulations on finishing your workout. I didn't actually get to record it because it snapped pretty quickly through. It just comes up and appears for a few seconds. So by the time I switched my camera on, the message had disappeared. But what happened at the end of that particular long run, it said I'd done a tempo run, which was a bit bizarre. And I looked at my splits and remember what I said about uh, GPS and running through wooded areas? Yeah, I mean, I was following, I was looking at what the Garmin was telling me in terms of my pace. So it was within the band of 505. So, you know, between 445 per kilometer pace and 515, 530 per kilometer. But for some reason it was recording below 430 per kilometer for three of those kilometers. So, you know, maybe it was, if I do the maths, maybe it was true, I don't know. But when I finished that long run, and um, I did feel good, felt great, and, uh, and I was ready for Sunday, day seven, yeah, seven. So the last day of my training, and once again, it suggested a base run. This time the base run was 42 minutes at a speed of 505 per kilometer again. So 42 is the meaning of life, universe and everything. For those of you who watch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, yeah, I know. And uh, finished that and felt really good. And, and this is where it suddenly uh, struck me where the artificial intelligence was beginning to kick in. And it was suggesting that uh, once I completed that run, it said on the actual Garmin, it says maybe it's time to think about having a rest uh, to stop running and I thought my god you know so running every day is actually suggesting for me it's not a particularly good idea to the point where today being day eight I looked at the Garmin again to see what the suggested workout was and it did say rest in big bold letters on the watch it said rest so yeah I broke my Garmin for running every day. Yeah, it said rest and understandably so. I am resting today. Today is the eighth day. It's almost quite biblical. Um, the Bible was on the seventh, you know, cr God created earth and on the seventh day he had, he had rest, yeah? Well, here I've, <laughs> I'm not claiming to be God by any stretch of the imagination, but I, <laughs> basically use the suggested run for seven days and on the eighth day it suggested I have a rest. Yes, I know, I know, it's, it's quite biblical. No offence meant to anyone out there for anything. It's just a bit of laugh. We've got to have a bit of a laugh at ourselves sometimes, yeah? So, um, yeah, as I put the light on again there. Yes, rest. So that was my week. Now, in terms of lessons learned, it was three, or was it four things that I'd learnt? And I'll go through now what I'd learnt from the week. So having been through each daily workout, I found no real trouble with any other workouts. Whilst the threshold run, the second set of 19 minutes, I struggled to hold that pace. So you could technically say I did struggle. Um, but if our bodies are going up and down, and maybe where the artificial intelligence of this, because this is on my wrist 24-7, so it knows my HRV or heart rate variance. It knows my fitness, my level, you know, how much sleep I've had. So it should monitor, if I haven't slept well the night before, it should detect that I'm not fit, well and able and to do that particular run. So it should suggest an easier run or a recovery run or not to run at all. You know, I appreciate on day eight, it said not to run at all, rest. Um, but that's, you know, it could have all happened yeah, so my second take on that is, or if you're going to follow this, always listen to your body. Do not follow the suggested workout to the letter if you don't feel it. Be prepared to take rest days if you feel you need a rest or take an easy run if it's suggesting a threshold or a sprint or whatever. Yeah, don't follow it to the letter. That's my second take. My third take on this, who's it really for? 
who can benefit from these because I do believe it would benefit a lot of people. That's why Garmin put it there. They will know from their stats because when you upload to the thing, even though it's anonymous, it knows that you've done a suggested workout. It knows people use it. It works. It's great. But for the kind of people that would use it, for me, I'm flexible when I can do my runs, routes, times and so on. But for me, being spontaneous, if I look at this, right, and let's say I have a meeting at 9 a.m. and I've switched this on and it's 7 and it's telling me to do a two-hour long run, I'm not going to be able to fit that in and get my 9 a.m. meeting done, am I? So it's basically geared to people who are a bit more flexible in their times. I did see a comment from one guy is, I don't use it because it doesn't tell me when... <laughs> He's suggesting that his spouse would get back ready to have a meal ready for him when, he's, when his meal's done because he doesn't know how long he's going to be out for. So you can't plan the day that way. So it's very much geared to those who don't have a specific plan and just want to maintain the level of fitness because take number four, you're going to want to know, did it make me fitter, faster, stronger? Well, the simple answer is, I don't know. Yeah, because the VO2 max at the start of the week was 59. The VO2 max at the end of the week, <laughs> at the end of the week, was still 59. Yeah, so that hadn't changed at all. But is seven days enough time to increase VO2 when it's already high anyway? I don't know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. In fact, let's have a quick look. I'm going to have a quick look now, see if what the VO2 is. So as I flick through, the VO2 max is, and let's have a look. VO2 max is still 59. Yes, there you go, verified. Here it is, Monday, day eight, it's still 59. So it hadn't budged one bit. It hadn't gone up or down on any of the days. If I monitor it, it's a straight line. I don't know if there's an issue. I did hear a few weeks back there was an issue with HRV and VO2 max for Garmin's. So it might be that there's a bit of a glitch in the software because personally, having done that week's training, I would have expected something to improve. What I did see improve through the week was my heart rate variance from being imbalanced to now being balanced. So maybe that was working and it's helping me feel a lot better for myself. Again, depending on what kind of watch you have, it will show that or not show that. So. Again, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below how you find it as well. That is it from the seven days of suggested workouts. As I said at the beginning, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that alarm bell because I'm going to go through the whole seven days, full epic long adventure video of what I've done each day, the runs with the GoPro following me on each and every run, on every run I was there including the park run and the 100 meter sprints. And also I'll be doing further tests on this watch to look at other features and so on and so forth. I'd love to hear from you what you think and what your take is from this particular video. Because um, yes, battling through floods, battling through wind and rain and all sorts of weather that is thrown here to us in the UK. It's just a regular winter's week, really. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. Give yourself a medal because I know you deserve it and I look forward to seeing you at the next video where there might be a shoe review and there might be some other epic stuff in terms of park runs and other types of stuff because I don't normally do shoe reviews but these are the types of shoes where I've done some epic mileage as I'm going through and also how we can maybe help save the environment in some way by us personally taking responsibility. Thanks so much for watching. Bye 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 bye. Love you all. Bye bye. That's it. We'll go now. Too foggy.